Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Mr. Mayor, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question and the answer is as printed. Can I just add to the printed answer that inevitably in times like this, one needs some qualities of sympathy and empathy, sympathy for the victims and empathy for those affected, willingness to listen and willingness to hear their views and willingness to put their one's arms around them and to wish them well and on their way. I think we also need the qualities of openness to learn from what's happened and perhaps keep minds open for what uh, analysis may come out of it uh, and indeed a, a support and supportive arms around those whose uh, livelihoods have been affected and whose livelihoods need to be repaired. Can I ask uh, the leader, in addition to his written reply, uh, is it possible to give us a timetable of the stages at which uh, officers and councillors were involved in the emergency decision making, how early they were involved? For example, were they involved as early as uh, Sunday when uh, Tooting experienced uh, some disturbances? I'm not expecting uh, a detailed reply this evening, but perhaps in the next couple of days. Thank Councillor Osborne for his uh, supplementary. I think, as I say in my written answer, one of the most important qualities of leadership was to let the emergency services get on with their jobs. And so interventions by politicians whilst the mayhem was going on was not on our agenda, and nor should it be. The first kind of officer meeting took place in this town hall on Tuesday morning, very early at 8.30. But long before that, officers were on the ground acting and keeping their colleagues informed. Clearly, we have to see whether our systems and the ways of working were fit for purpose and will remain fit for purpose should this event uh, occur again. Hopefully not, uh, but Mr. Kingan's report will help us steer our way through lessons to be learned. Councillor Usher. Could you put your microphone on, please, Councillor Usher? Especially as his predecessor, Ken Livingston, had so proudly boasted that he'd never set foot in Wandsworth. Um, and to pick up on what um, the leaders said, the, I think we're very grateful for the sympathy and the empathy shown by the Mayor of London on the Tuesday morning to all the people affected in Wandsworth. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Usher is absolutely right that the Mayor's visit um, on, on, on that afternoon was much appreciated by the people affected. And in fact, the mayor was so open and willing to talk to people, including those who had critical words for him. He wasn't uh, going to go only to the nice people who might say, well done, Boris. He was prepared to listen to those who were deeply affected and traumatized by the events. And I, I think the, the people found the mayor's visit very helpful and very supportive. Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. Thank Councillor Osborne for his um, second question. What I was really deeply impressed uh, about was the way in which the local community came out to sort of start the repair business, to start the process of getting back to normality. I was even more impressed to meet a, a, an individual who said that he traveled through Clapham Junction as a commuter on a daily basis and took time off to help clean up the station and the environments. He had never visited Wandsworth before or Clapham Junction before, but he felt that he wanted to do something for a place that he passed through. That was very, very impressive. Supplementary, um, then Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Davis. No, sorry, Councillor Osborne. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, can I ask uh, the leader, in addition to what he said already, uh, what would he say are the main points, main headings of lessons learned uh, from the uh, emergency actions that had to be taken during the period of the disturbances? And in particular, what potential he sees for cross-party activity, uh, for example, in this town hall uh, in, uh, in the future? 
I, I, I welcome this opportunity. I mean, Councillor Osborne is right that there is, uh, there is a lot of common ground in, in, in what we need to do uh, and the way we need to react. And I think members have seen various bits of paper circulating which shows the extent of the common ground there exists. This is not an occasion for, for us to trade political differences. This is an occasion to say to our people and our residents that we understand what you've gone through and we want to actually ensure that it doesn't happen again. One of the things that I, I found uh, slightly, well, I was taken aback by was that broom army. This council nor this community was prepared for that spontaneous reaction and that spontaneous expression of goodwill. We were not up to our usual mark in harnessing that goodwill. And clearly that's a very important lesson to learn. A, to recognize that there is enormous goodwill out there for their own community, their neighborhoods, and this, this council and this borough. And this borough needs to show leadership in harnessing and channeling it successfully. Councillor Davis. A second supplementary question. And um, will the council leader join me in congratulating um, or praising um, a number of council officers who I think worked uh, throughout the night, a very difficult night of um, 8th um, August, and also on the um, following day? I, I thank um, Councillor Davis for his supplementary, and he's absolutely right that uh, we have in this town hall extraordinarily good staff, and how good they actually are was tested in those early days, uh, in the early days of August. One of our housing operatives was on Levin Stanley uh, on, a, on an emergency call to help a tenant who had been trapped in a lift, and he was attacked, but he completed his job. That's a level of dedication that, that we are grateful for, our residents are grateful for. There were staff who worked all hours, whether they were manning CCTV control room or just going around making sure that the affected businesses were feeling supported. I, I, I take my hat off to them and I have to say that our staff have come out incredibly well and local residents appreciate it and say so. Council Mrs. Dunn. Again, Mr. May, with your permission, if I may sort of skip the written answer and, and take it as read. Um, what I'd say is that there are those who might have said that um, it's not the ones that way to uh, get an outsider to look at our business and advisors. I don't think that's true. I think that is precisely the ones that way. Ones that has a reputation of learning from others and emulating what others do well and improving on it. We have a reputation for, like a magpie, picking all the best bits from elsewhere, making them even better in the service of our community. Mr. Kingan will do that, and I'm, I'm grateful for his work. Supplementary. Um, could the leader uh, it, just tell us a bit more why he chose um, Neil Kingan for, the, for, the, for this role? What, what are the, sort of the qualities that he has and the skills that he brings to the table which will make him um, the best person to write this sort of report? Mr. Mayor, I'd be absolutely honest and say the best person to write a report in the kind of time scales that we asked for is the person who is available. I mean, that's a fairly st straightforward uh, uh, thing. But those who were in the civic, the civic suite on Monday will have seen the calmness and the courtesy with which Mr. Kingan conducted that meeting, leaving everyone there feeling that they had been heard, they had an opportunity to say their piece. Uh, that is uh, the kind of skill uh, which will inform his report and that will make his report cogent and, and, and sensible. Um, I have had no one say to me he is the wrong person. Um, I have had nobody say to me that why is he, uh, who is he or whatever. Um, what I am also aware of looking at his CV and his track record is that he's done trickier things than this, oddly enough. Uh, conducting a review of primary school provision in rural Shropshire can't actually have been easy. It might have been less hot uh, compared to the disturbances in this borough, but the emotions were probably greater and, and, uh, and the skills he needed to de discharge that function were probably uh, were, were much more than, than he needs in this borough.
Seconded by me. Councillor McCausland. Um, obviously, um, writing a report uh, requires a great deal of um, literary skill and high intelligence and a uh, long period of learning and education. Um, I just wonder if the leader could um, comment on um, how we might uh, produce that sort of level of skill from um, disadvantaged, or should we say, deprived youngsters in Wandsworth, which perhaps could be applied in, in other boroughs in an independent capacity, uh, perhaps on a, on a happier occasion. Well, just, just I, 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 I don't know whether Mr. Kingan's ever made to the book a shortlist, uh, so I don't really know his, uh, uh, his dexterity in, in, in that kind of writing. But I have read what he has written in terms of uh, uh, reports in the Shropshire report which I read. Uh, it is clear, it is cogent, and it is precise, and it comes to a conclusion, uh, and which is exactly what we want. Hopefully, um, just leaving Mr. Kingdom's skills, of which I have no doubt, aside, what I was very impressed about also was a number of people who wrote quite independently to me offering their services to mentor young people. A company in, in Earlsfield uh, said that their, their staff are willing to spend time with young people to coach them how to prepare for interviews, how to dress for interviews, how to write CVs. I mean, those are the kind of mentoring skills that I think some of our young people would, would benefit greatly from. And those are the skills that I want to bring forth and harness, harness in support of our young people. Councillor Thomas. And question number four to the leader. Uh, thank Councillor Thomas for his uh, uh, question. Um, there's a very detailed uh, um, answer, uh, which I take, it's read. But can I just, we're talking about fundamental principles. Say one thing about a, a, a fairly simple fundamental principle I learned in my, possibly in my first month at law school, was that there is something called criminal law and there is something called civil law, two quite different things. Uh, the, the presumption innocence applies to the criminal law and not to the civil law. Certainly doesn't apply to the contractual obligations between parties. So perhaps that's a principle that Councillor Thomas might want to spend some time uh, brushing up on. 